In search of a spiritual home, some may visit a holy religious site, yet others might attend a wellness resort or spiritual retreat. But for me, today, in quest of a spiritual home, I've come here, a town 40 kilometers east of Taipei, embedded in the mountains of northern Taiwan, a town called Zhoufen, with such nicknames as Little Hong Kong, Little Shanghai, and the Gold City of Asia. Zhoufen boasts a very unique history. In the year 1890, someone struck gold here, and not too long afterwards, prospectors from all over flocked here to turn this small town into a rich city with a thriving culture. Zhoufen's most recent ascent to fame, though, has to do with cinema. In 2001, after one of Hayao Miyazaki's most proclaimed movies, Spirited Away, came out. Many journalists came out claiming that Jofen had to be the inspirational setting for the film with its history of gold, a theme touched on in the movie, and the resemblance of Spirited Away's bathhouse to Jofen's Ame Tea House. However, more recently, Miyazaki himself has come out to confirm that there is no connection between Jofen and the movie Spirited Away. Yet still, there remains an undeniable mystique surrounding this Taiwanese ancient town. So today, I've come back to Jofen to immerse you all in this magical little town and show you what makes it truly special. But first things first, I need to check into my hotel, the Mountain Traveler Inn. And I tell you, you don't know the definition of Mountain Traveler until you come to Jofen. I said I wanted a spiritual experience. I guess, in one way, there's nothing more spiritual than toiling labor. There's something about these steps and this stone architecture that makes this town feel like one living, breathing mountain. At this point, it feels like I've climbed half the mountain. Why not just climb the whole Dagon thing? When you come to Jofen, you gotta climb around Mount Keelung. I love it because I think it gives you a nice little overall scope of the town. Firstly, in terms of the history. I mean, just to think about how many risky souls gambled their lives by coming to scavenge this mountain for gold. But then also, that view right there. I mean, that's what it's all about. I don't think there's any ancient town in Asia that I visited that can offer a view quite as spectacular as that. That right there is big picture Jofen, and it's absolutely spectacular, no arguments there. But now, let's zoom in on this little town, and I think you'll find that up close, it looks, smells, and tastes just as amazing. When I'm here in Jofen, all I wanna do is eat, eat, walk around, and eat some more. What is it about this little mountain town that makes food so attractive? Well, part of the reason has to do with all those calories I burned walking up and down those mountain stairs. But also part of the reason is that just the food variety here is so damn good. I mean, we're talking sausages on sticks, the chewiest of taro balls, the slurpiest of beef noodles, peanut ice cream burritos, and red Taiwanese meatballs. But here's my conspiracy theory. We're in this little town snuggled up in the mountains with an architectural layout that is pretty dense. I mean, a lot of these buildings look like they were built one on top of the other. And then you combine that in with all the flavors and the smokes and emissions coming from all directions. There's nowhere for the delicious flavors to go except in your nostrils. It's the recipe for a tourist trap, literally. Speaking of tourist traps, when in Jofen, one must also keep their eyes peeled for alluringly charming tea houses. Those will sucker you in just as well. At least they got my number. Nothing pulls at my heartstrings quite like a tea house that's not only tranquil and gorgeous, but also has some real history behind it. The kind of tea house where I can imagine myself sitting next to Dufu or Aristotle or Anthony Bourdain and pondering the deep questions of life. And Jofen has plenty of tea houses to fit just that bill. My number one choice for sipping on history in Jofen is Jofen Tea House. It actually was adapted from an old artist's house into 
Joe Fenn's first tea house, as well as an art workshop and art gallery. But the most famous tea spot in Zhou Fen is Ame Tea House. Fun fact, it was once Zhou Fen's one and only blacksmith shop. I'm here at Ame Tea House overlooking one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. A golden ray of light shining upon the shores of the old gold city of Asia. Now Zhou Fen, I've always remembered that you are one pretty lady. But how could I forget that when the lights go down, the way you shine through the Taiwan night makes any man or woman go double take. Whether you're looking down the panoramic view from the top of the mountain or squeezing your way through the narrow alleys, the night views here in Zhou Fen are truly spectacular. I like that there are some romantic souls still walking around, keeping the place vibrant and bright, but at the same time, there are few enough people that you can stroll up and down the hill and feel like you've got Lady Jofen all to yourself. A young boy knows nothing, not even his left shoe from his right, decides to leave his hometown in search of adventure. He goes and he goes, traveling as far from his home as he can until he ends up in a small exotic town in the mountains. Not knowing his left from his right, he gets lost in a jungle of alleys. The first alley he turns down leads him to a crowded food stall steeping in flavors he had never imagined. The second alley he turns down leads him to a quaint tea house brewing with stories of the past. The third alley he turns down leads him up and up a mountain to the most spectacular view he has witnessed in his short lifetime. He may have no idea where he is going, but for once in his life, he is not lost. For once in his life, he is sure of something. For he has stumbled upon the beginning of a magnificent adventure. When I first visited Joe Fenn in 2017, it changed my life. Imagine a bright-eyed kid just having graduated college, coming to Taiwan, first place ever living abroad, first place ever working a full-time job. And the moment I arrived in Jofen, I knew that I had entered a new dimension. When I returned to the States, the impressions of Jofen remained deep in my heart and in my mind. The settings for my meditations were Jofen. When I would sit down to write, what would come out was Jofen. More recently, I've moved to and started my YouTube channel traveling around mainland China. But for me, the journey all began with Zhou Fen. Moving forward, I'm going to be making some videos exploring Taiwan, one of my favorite places in the world with some of the friendliest people, cities that'll dazzle you, and a fascinating culture. I'll see you for the next episode.